This is the MSI Claw AI8 with Intel's Lunar Lake. Now I have already gone ahead and reviewed the MSI Claw AI8, but I had to return it to MSI. A few months later, Intel emailed me and they said, hey, we have updated our drivers and have significantly improved performance. Would you test that out? And I said, I don't have it anymore. And thankfully, Intel shipped me another one, and I will eventually have to ship this back once again. But in the meantime, I get to show you that indeed, the latest drivers can and do significantly improve performance on Intel Lunar Lake for the MSI Claw AI 8. But there are also some regressions that do indeed happen, and we're going to touch over all of those. Now, we will get into the game benchmarks a little bit later on to this, but there's a few things that we need to talk about. Number one, whenever I do TDP uh, package power testing, we have to understand that the for the package power for Intel Lunar Lake, that includes the RAM itself because RAM is on the package. The end result being is that total system power is around 3 to 4 watts better uh, compared to uh, AMD platforms. So if you had like the latest AMD platforms at 15 watt, typically you're going to be around 24 to 25 watt total system power in the same type of brightness, same type of panel. And on Intel Lunar Lake, you're going to be at like 21 and a half, 22. So there's like a three to four watt total system power savings when doing 15 watt to 15 watt. So for benchmarks, we will be comparing the original launch drivers that came with the MSI Claw AI8 versus the updated drivers, which are the August 19th drivers that I have now. Now, not to leave you guys hanging, I will do a small comparison with uh, AMD's latest platform, their AMD HX370 Strix Point platform. So we'll take a look quickly at some kind of high level overview. We're going to compare the Steam, uh, Steam Deck running SteamOS 3.5, we're going to be comparing the HX370 running Windows 11, and also the latest drivers on the MSI Claw AI8. So very quickly, just jumping straight into this graph right here, and it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to be comparing Steam Deck to SteamOS 3.5, the Intel 250V, which is Intel Lunar Lake, the MSI Claw AI8, and then an AMD Strix HX370 platform is AMD Strix Point. This is their latest. Now, if we just take a look at CPU-bound benchmarks, we can see that Intel Lunar Lake kind of matches what HX370 does, but again, we're not taking a look at what this looks like adjusted. When we adjust it for total system power, we can see that Lunar Lake, especially up to 10, 13 watt, actually does have a significant advantage. It's a very good handheld for very low power. When we start going into higher TDPs, 15 and 20 watt, we can see that the HX370 definitely has an advantage. However, when we take a look at synthetics for GPU bound, we can see that they're pretty close overall, like how the Steam Deck fits into here, how the HX370 does really poorly until we start pushing enough power into it for the system to wake up and actually do stuff. And Intel's Lunar Lake actually rides with Steam Deck pretty good. When we adjust for total system power though, that's when we can see that Intel's Lunar Lake has a distinct advantage really all the way up to 20 watt. It's a very performant machine given that power range. So really you have to adjust yourself when taking a look at this platform and when comparing wattage to wattage against these two different platforms, you must look at total system power because it will be different. So when we just do this gross uh, adjusted for total system power, you have an approximation of where this is. And generally speaking, Intel's Lunar Lake is very, very good. It is a very performant handheld overall. The other thing that we have to talk about is that with the latest driver, Intel has this new way that they need to do it. And for all intents and purposes, I use my own tools to adjust TDP. How you will likely be doing it on the MSI Claw AI8 is using MSI's, MSI's own tools. And in MSI's own tools, they already set it how Intel wants them to. And how Intel wants you to do it is they want PL2 to be at 37 watt, and then PL1 can be whatever watt you want. Now, when I'm doing those tests, initially when I was doing the benches, you have to wait for P that PL2 window to die down. It's the turbo window, typically it's around 28 seconds. And it's annoying to do tests like that. And not all the time was I able to successfully get that dialed in. Now, for what Intel told me, even just doing a one watt difference between PL1 and PL2 helps a lot. So what all of my tests were, were if PL1 was at 10 watt, PL2 would be at 11 watt, likewise for 15 and 20. And even when I adjusted for the, the timeout window for PL2 to go back so that I was for sure only uh, getting PL1 power consumption there, that was where we saw actual performance differences. Now, there are regressions, but there are also kind of washes where things are relatively similar. But then there are real clear gains that are got between the new drivers versus launch drivers, and we're going to go into those. So let's jump straight into the game benchmarks so you have a better understanding of where that sits.
Before we get into the benchmarks that you can see right here, I just want to quickly just touch base with you guys so you have a better idea of what these numbers actually mean and a little bit of my methodology when I'm testing these systems. So for methodology-wise, when we compare the original MSI Claw 8 with Intel's Lunar Lake versus the updated drivers, which you're going to see here, is... For all intents and purposes, our default settings on Windows 11, I didn't really change all that much. The only thing that I really changed was the memory integrity. So that is off, and that is a part of the Windows Defender suite of tools that Windows has for increasing security. I disable that pretty much for all of my testing just to make sure that that doesn't interfere with anything. Outside of that, pretty much everything is the same, including the power config that is there. So it is a balanced setting. So any EPP settings that are there are what I'm using as well. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. Outside of that, I'm using my own tools to, to calibrate power, and that's how I'm locking in 10 watt, 15 watt, and 20 watts so that we can compare and see what's going on here. So you have an understanding of the methodology in terms of being able to recreate some of these benchmarks so you can compare to what I have. Uh, that's basically all I did. Now, when it comes to understanding these these benches, you're going to see two different parts here. You're going to see a grayed out version and a not grayed out version. The grayed out version is going to have the 258V with the latest drivers that I have available that I've tested, which is the August 19th drivers. And then you're going to see Intel 258V with nothing after it. And that is the launch day review benches that I still have. So we're going to be comparing the launch day review numbers versus what I just have now. So let's get into it. Up first, we're taking a look at Batman Arkham Knight. This is 720p native at max settings minus NVIDIA hair works and all that other stuff. This is the only bad performance that we got out of the bunch. So if we take a look at 10 watt, we can see there we're about 16% better on averages, uh, about 20% better on one percentile and about 20% better on 0.2 percentile. So that is a 10 watt. And what's interesting is as we take a look at 10 watt uh, going forward, 10 watt is a bit squirrely overall. So I really wouldn't recommend going down to 10 watt ever really for anything that is going to put a demand on the GPU. If you're going to be putting a demand on the GPU, it started 15 watt and not for nothing because memory is included on the package power for Lunar Lake. Going up to 15 watt isn't as bad as 15 watt for like an AMD handheld because we're going to be using less overall total system power, which I had talked about earlier on in this video. Anyway, going up to 15 watt, kind of closed the gap a bit, but we're still about 15% better on averages. Uh, about 20% better on 1 percentile and 20% better on point, uh, 0.2 percentile. And going up to 20 watt comparing the two, it's about 13% difference on averages, 13% uh, different on 1 percentile, and about 12% different on 0.2 percentile. So overall, you can see that the latest drivers ha have a, a quite a bit of a regression in performance. But this is the only game out of the bunch that I tested that I am seeing this in. Everything else is actually better or pretty much the same. So let's get to the next one. All right, so now we're taking a look at Cyberpunk 2077. This is 720p native with the Steam Deck preset. Now, Steam Deck preset is actually pretty high settings overall. Like, in terms of image quality that you're getting, textures are high. There's a lot of actual high settings in the Steam Deck preset. When we take a look at 10 watt, again, like I had said earlier, 10 watt is a bit squirrely. When we take a look at the difference between the launch day drivers versus the August 19th drivers, we can see about a 6% difference in favor of the the launch drivers. Likewise, for the one percentile, we're about 13, 14 percent better and 0.2 percentile the same. But when we go to 15 watt, we can see that this is different. On average, we actually have a 23 percent increase in performance. And one percentile, 0.2 percentile are pretty much the same as the launch day drivers, which is interesting that we're seeing these types of results because typically you would like to see the the one percentile and 0.2 percentile pick it up a bit. Overall, the fluidity is still there, but we are showing better averages. Now, when we take a look at 20 watt, again, same type of situation where our averages are 20% better. And this is, you know, same wattage. So 20 watt versus 20 watt, we just have 20% better averages. However, when we take a look at our 1 percentile, 0.2 percentile, it's exactly the same. So this is where things, it does overall feel more fluid, uh, but you still have that 1 percentile, 0.2 percentile feel. But generally speaking, we still have better performance. For this next game, I, I always love showing this. Between Batman Arkham Knight and Deus Ex Mankind Divided, these are DirectX 11 games. You have an Unreal Engine 3 game that was like put to its uh, to the max. And then we have Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which is its own engine, but this is a late-gen DirectX 11 game, and I am using the DirectX 11 backend. We are pushing really hard on the GPU with the Ultra preset, even though we are still 720p native. And when we take a look at our 10 watt results, again, if you take a look at the August 19 drivers, you can see that 1 percentile and 0.2 percentile are really squirrely. Like it's it's not good at all. And our averages are pretty pretty much the same. But 
this is where things always kind of look kind of weird at 10 watt. When we take a look at 15 watt, this is where things get a bunch better. So we're looking at almost 30% better on averages on our one percentile. We have around 7% better on, on one percentile and a 40% increase on 0.2 percentile. That is a huge increase while using the exact same power. This is great for what Intel is doing here. You can see that they're moving a lot into what the GPU is able to do in a, uh, inside of a power scope that isn't all that large. 15 watt is typically where you want to be in a handheld, generally speaking, and they're really banging on all cylinders. And if we want to go up a little bit further, if we want to go to 20 watt, we can still see that we're again, again getting a 20% increase on averages, 3% uh, better on one percentile and 6% better on 0.2 percentile. Really great showing here from Intel. And this is like a clear example, I think, of what they wanted to show with the new performance increase that Intel was touting with their latest drivers. The next thing we're going to be taking a look at is Horizon Zero Dawn 720p native with the Favor Performance preset. Now, what's interesting here is that 10 watt kind of looks like how all the other wattages look. And so far as 15 versus 15, 20 versus 20. So when we take a look at this, the launch date drivers are once again pulling ahead, but it's not gigantically different. So it may just be a small regression. Now, again, when I'm using these latest drivers, how Intel wants you to do it is they want PL2 to be a value higher than PL1. While that still is the case, when I did these benches, I still had to wait for that PL2 time window to time out so that it would go back to its PL1 window. All of these are effectively 10 watt versus 10 watt, 15 watt versus 15 watt. That being said, let's get into it. For 10 watt, we're looking at a 6% different on averages. And then for 1 percentile and 0.2 percentile, it's around a 12% difference. Now for averages, it's pretty much the same for 15 watt versus 15 watt, so effectively nothing. And then we take a look at 1 percentile and 0.2 percentile. Again, we're looking at that 10% difference in favor of the launch drivers. And then we take a look at 20 watt. Again, averages are effectively the same. And our 1 percentile and 0.2 percentile are 10% different. Again, a small regression, but insofar on the 1 percentile and 0.2 percentile side, averages are pretty much the same. So interesting result. And this game really does favor AMD APUs quite a lot. So really interesting data regardless of anything. Let's take a look at the final game in this benchmark list. And the last game we're going to be taking a look at here is Returnal. This is 720p native with the low preset. This game is exceedingly brutal on GPUs, and it's one of the main reasons that I love including it because it stresses the APU so hard on the GPU side and really very little on the CPU, if at all. When you do a lot of this, you're often going to see that the CPU is basically doing nothing and the GPU is doing all of the work. Now, again, when we take a look at 10 watt, we can see that launch day drivers are doing better at 10 watt, or about 50% better on averages, 20% better on percentile, and 13% better on 0.2 percentile. Again, 10 watt is squirrely on these latest drivers. Either it's better on power efficiency. I'm not taking a look at total power here. I'm just taking a look at TDP, which is the package power. And then we take a look at 15 watt. This is where things kind of even out. So averages 100%, one percentile. This is actually in favor 6% of the latest drivers. And for a 0.2 percentile is a 2% difference, effectively nothing. So still slightly better for the August 19th drivers, but still basically a wash. We'll go to 20 watt. It's 99%. It's basically the same on averages, basically the same on one percentile, and a 10% lead for the launch day drivers on 0.2%. When we take a look at where Intel's Lunar Lake is and where the latest drivers are, we do see that in a few different games, we are getting clear performance improvements while using the exact same power. That is no small feat. And the large performance increase that we got, uh, truthfully, kudos to Intel for extracting more performance out of there. In the other two games that we're not really seeing much of a performance increase, it's kind of a wash. We do have uh, some regression at 1 percentile and 0.2 percentile. And then for Batman Arkham Knight being the one corner case, and again, this game is really difficult for Intel GPUs. So for that particular uh, sample of only five games and two of them being a clear win and two of them being a wash and one of them being a regression. I think overall, this is kind of a nice sample set to understand where Intel's latest drivers are. Let me know in the comment section if you have the MSI Claw AI and how you guys are getting along with the latest drivers. For me, it seems to be mostly a win. Either it's a wash or a clear win. And what I would love to see from Intel, especially for handhelds, if they want to continue in this arena, is really pushing this further. I'm glad that they've been, what they've been doing, their endurance gaming uh, mode that they have on their drivers, trying to really maximize battery life. It is already a fantastic platform for low power use. It's very low power and performant.
Having said that, I would really love for Intel to push further in this arena. We really need bigger GPUs and we need more bandwidth given to those GPUs. Just by having 120 bit wide and 8533 mega transfers, you're going to be severely limited, especially as we start going up. So that's one thing that I would really love for Intel to try to figure out and push forward on, because that's going to be the thing that really wows people and really makes people kind of appreciate PC gaming as it is. Overall, as it is, the MSI Claw a 8 is still a very competent handheld and with the latest drivers even more so, but it's more, it is a fantastic low power yet still performant handheld that is comparable to other handhelds out there. And I don't think that it's bad or worse than anything. And it's really just a, a compliment to the types of handhelds that are out there. Thank you very much to Intel once again for sending this out to me review. I hope to be able to do just a few more tests before I have to send this out once again, but I would like to collect that data set just so that I have it for when newer handhelds come out. That's my look at the latest drivers for Intel's Lunar Lake. Overall, I am impressed, and I think Intel deserves kudos here. So good job, Intel. Please continue working at it. Thank you very much to my Patreon members as well as my YouTube channel members. Your support really means the world to me, guys. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.